So let us start. Today, I would like to show you this example of Tikhonov concerning the non-uniqueness of solutions to to ut minus Laplace of u equal to zero zero so we are now in an equal one space dimension so we work here in R and then u of zero equal some function equal zero um, at time zero on and you also So it is clear that uh, the zero solution is a solution of this problem because at time zero. So u equals zero is a solution, obviously. This is so the point is to construct another solution. The point of the example is construct another non-zero solution to one so that at the end there cannot be uniqueness of solutions to this problem uh, remember that on the other hand uh, on bounded domains yesterday we saw that uh, in uh, say zero capital T times omega omega bounded the solution is unique okay remember in the solution is if it exists, is unique, OK? So the point here is that uh, the domain is unbounded. OK, so the idea of Tikhonov is to first reason formally, formally, look for a solution for u of tx of the form sum sum coefficients depending on t x to the j for any tx in 0 plus infinity time r Uh, so we try to find the solution of this form hmm? of course we will have to see that the series is converging suitably strongly so, so uh, but for the moment let us forget for the moment the problem of convergence so let us reason formally and assume that we are also that assume that we also require so this is r x this is t we also require uh, look for so uh, such that
on this yellow half line, hmm, u is equal to some given g, given, to be chosen, uh, on x equals 0, that is on this line, x equals 0 on, say, 0 plus infinity, hmm? product 0, that is on this half line, and uh, ux equal to 0 on same line. So this seems to be too much. But if one is able to construct a solution with the following property, this will be a solution. So uh, now you will see why we are asking that the derivative in this direction along this line is 0 on this line, and u is g. So. I mean, if, you, if one is not able to do, then one cannot construct anything. Otherwise, one can try to look for solution with these properties. And of course, one has also to impose this eh, at the end. So let us see what happens if we formally compute ut. So assuming convergence uh, sufficiently strong, I differentiate under the integral, under the, the sign of series. So formally, we have g prime j of t xj, hmm? formally. ux, formally is equal to sum from 1 to plus infinity j, g j of t, x to the j minus 1. And u x x is equal sum from 2 to plus infinity j j minus 1, gj of t, x to the j minus 2. OK? This is formal. In principle, one cannot do this. But at the end, assume that I am able to construct coefficients, suitable coefficients. Huh? Assume that. I am able to construct coefficients gj depending on g so that this converges uniformly, for instance, on and all derivatives converge uh, uniformly, for instance, on, uh, say, for bounded uh, sets, uh, at least in space, then it will turn out that uh, this can be done. I can, differentiate, I can differentiate under the, the integral sign. Under the, we can, so the, 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 the derivative of the series is actually the series of the derivative. OK? So for the moment, I have this, and I have this. So what happens if I impose u, such a new to be a solution of this? What happens? Well. Let me rewrite this as the sum from 0 to plus infinity of j plus 2, j plus 1, g j plus 2 of t x to the j. This is a simple change of variables, OK? I change variable. I call uh, j minus 2, I call it uh, k. OK, and this is change of value. OK, so if I impose 
u to be a solution, I am imposing that this is equal to this. Hmm? This must be equal to this. OK, now let's see what happens if I require u equal to g on this line. So u of t 0 is actually equal to what? u of any time 0 is g 0 of t. Huh? Hence, I want my first, uh, my first, um, my first requirement is on the on the coefficients. Of course, I'm looking for the coefficients. Huh? So, I require the first coefficient to be equal g, that I still have to choose. Hmm? So this condition is due to to this requirement. Hmm? Now, I am assuming also a derivative in this direction along this line. I'm looking for a solution having zero derivative here, so some sort of um, even solution. So uh, ux, ux, so this says that g1 you see? So u, u x uh, at t 0, u x at t 0, I see it from here. It is just g 1 of t. And therefore, I require on the second, on the second unknown, on the second unknown coefficient, I require g1 equal to 0. Hmm? So let me write now. Um, let me write now what happens. By, so for the moment, I have imposed this condition and this condition. From this condition, I, I deduce this. From the, from this condition, ux on this half on this half line, I deduce g1 equal to zero. Now I have to impose the validity of the equation. The validity of the equation says, you see, this is a series, this is another series. I want this to be equal, and therefore I require that all coefficients of the same xj coincide. Okay, so I require that g j prime of t must be equal to j plus two uh, j plus one g j plus two g j plus two. Okay. That is, I require. the following condition, g j plus 2 of t to be equal to g j prime of t divided by j plus 2 times j plus 1 for any j bigger or equal than 0. Hmm? So I have the condition, the first coefficient, condition that the uh, the zero coefficient must be g. The first coefficient must be zero. And therefore, I see what, for, and then this. So what I deduce from uh, this? Um, so g0 equal g. So let me erase this. I deduce that, first of all, on all 
odd indices, this must be equal to zero. Is it OK? Because you see, we have that the first odd coefficient is zero. And then, for instance, g3, uh, yes, g3 for j equal to 1 is equal to g1 divided by something, but g1 is 0. Therefore, g3 is 0. And therefore, g5 is 0, g7 is 0, g9 is 0. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but g1 is identically 0. And therefore, g1 prime is identically 0. And so on. Hmm? This is always the case. When, when you have a sort of a problem and you are looking for a solution written as a series, and then you have that one coefficient is 0, and then you have a relation between uh, not 1 and the previous 1, but this differs by 2, j plus 2 and j, then uh, you have this. this. On the other hand, what, so what happens to g2, for instance? which is the first even number indices index j equal to 0. This says that this is equal to g0 prime divided by uh, 2. OK? But g0 prime is equal to g. Hmm? And what happens to g4? Uh, what happens to g4? g4 must be equal to g2 prime divided by 4 times uh, 3, huh? which is equal to g. Uh, so g, g2 prime is actually this, and therefore I have g second divided by 4 factorial. Okay? And in this way, it's not, uh, it is. Four, four times three times two. Three times two. OK. So by induction, one shows, therefore, that g for any, so uh, g to k of t is equal to g k divided by 2k factor. OK? So now we, we keep only, therefore, this information on the blackboard. So we have this, and then we have this. So what happens to our series? Our series, our function u, we are looking for, you see now what is this? So this is j from 0 to plus infinity gj of t x to the j, which is equal now to what? It is equal to k equal 0 plus infinity. Uh, gk 2k factorial x to the 2k gk of t hmm? please check this because this is actually why is it true because this sum is, actu is actually only only um, 
on the even indices because the odd indices, the coefficients are zero. So G to K, huh? so this is simply sum over K. At, at J is equal to 2K, and so it is this. Uh, divided by this x, so it, it is, this seems to be correct, okay? Okay. So now, you see, what happens, what, what does it mean? So how are you now? Our candidate, because for the moment everything is formal, there is no proof. Everything is formal. But our candidate at the moment has coefficients which depend only on one function g. Huh? Because this is the k derivative of only one function g. So now we have to choose g. And we hope we choose g, and we hope that with this choice, this object satisfies all required problems. Is it, is it clear, the, the line of reasoning? So now choose G. Now choose G so that this, this sum satisfies, hopefully, Hopefully, all required properties. Hmm? What does it mean, satisfies all required properties? Well, choose G so that this sum is converging. All derivatives in time and space are converging. This is smooth enough. And it's at, by construction, by construction, it will, uh, it will satisfy. So this object automatically, by construction, satisfies uh, u equal g on the yellow half line and ux equal 0 on the yellow, yellow half line. So what we have satisfied, so namely, the sum is converging, is converging sufficiently well, strongly, sufficiently strongly, and u is smooth enough. And u at time 0 is equal to 0. Hmm? or require properties so that I can uh, differentiate under the sum and, uh, and this holds. OK, so let now, so if up to now it is clear, otherwise please ask, uh, is it OK? So I keep the expression of the function u on the blackboard. So let me write now the expression just only here, u of tx sum of, uh, now we have gk of t, then we have 2k factorial x to the 2k. Uh, which equality? Uh, the ah, this? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Hmm? Yes, it's okay. Strong. 
sufficiently strongly, uh, uniformly. <coughs> we will see this at the end. Okay. So this is what we have proven up to now. If such a solution exists, it must have the following form. Now, cho choice of G defined. G of T equal to E to the minus 1 over T squared for t bigger than 0, and 0 for t equal to 0. OK? Which is a C infinity function. Hmm? OK? Now the point you see what happens also you if if everything is smooth with this choice if everything is smooth formally with this choice I de have that this is gk of 0 and gk of 0 is 0 so if you want, extend it, if you like. But this does, is not important. But if you, you can extend it like this. And then this is equal to 0 formally. Ah, by the way, notice also that this function g is now c infinity, say, but of course, is not analytic. Is not real analytic. Hmm? It is a standard example of a C infinity function which is not analytic. All the deriv all derivatives in zero are in are zero. <coughs> okay. So now what to, so if there is a hope that this is the correct uh, object, so that there is a hope because this function g satisfies, for instance, uh, this, uh, this property. Now the point is to study the convergence of this series. So now we are trying to estimate gk of t to see the behavior of gk of t. Study gk of t. Estimate, say. Now, consider, <coughs> so we have for positive t. So now we have positive t. Hmm? Consider now an extension of g as follows. g of z is equal to, say, e to the minus 1 over z squared for any complex z different from the origin and 0. So uh, now g is, g is holomorphic <coughs> out of the origin. Okay. So we we can now compute 
in particular if t is positive if t is positive I am out of the, of the, of the origin huh? and I compute this uh, quantity here <clears throat> let me call the notation the notation that I'm using GK let me use omega omega <clears throat> omega minus t to the k plus 1 so this is omega complex number k plus 1 in the uh, in the omega what is this okay now take gamma gamma is a parameterization of the circle centered at t this is the Cauchy formula for holomorphic functions I mean the Cauchy formula usually is for k equal to 0 but then we know that it extends to all derivatives so <clears throat> where gamma is parameterization of the circle centered at t0 the complex number t0 of radius small enough such that we don't touch the origin because in the origin there is a problem the function is not analytic is not homomorphic say for instance radius t over 2 so I have t0 and then I have this circle and then I have by Cauchy formula for, for Cauchy formula for um, holomorphic functions so in this way I will try so remember that I want to estimate this so why I'm doing this because I want to estimate this this is the goal I want to see that the series converges so I have this hence <clears throat> um, hence uh, I, I can say what, what I can say can say that gk of t is less than or equal than k factorial over 2 pi the integral over gamma of g of omega divided by omega these are complex numbers uh, um, so this is this is k plus 1 and then I have the omega say. so this is a circle centered at t so let, let me define this circle so the circle is uh, the image of the map gamma that is the circle is the set of all z such that uh, z is equal to t plus one half t mm. Mm. namely z minus this real number 
is a circle of radius t over 2. Uh, all points. Uh, uh. So this is the circle. Centered, so z minus t. So any point of the circle centered, so this is t over 2. Uh, this is t0. <coughs> Any point of this circle can be written as t plus t half e exponential. Huh? So this is the circle. <coughs> so therefore, this is what? factorial over 2 pi <coughs> the integral over gamma now uh, omega minus so omega is on this circle uh, so omega minus t is equal to uh, 1 half uh, is it, omega minus t is equal to t over 2 times this unit vector so this is just t over 2 to the k plus 1. <clears throat> then I have uh, 1 half t theta. And then ha I have e to the minus 1 over omega squared. Huh? <coughs> Is it okay? Hmm? <coughs> so So what do I have now? This t over 2 cancels with this, with one of these. Therefore, what remains here is equal to. So let me check. We have to be careful about the numbers, of course. So uh, this is uh, 2 over t to the k. The integral over gamma. So now, <coughs> e to the minus 1 over omega squared. Now, uh, e to the minus 1 over omega squared is equal to the e minus the real part minus the imaginary part um, 1 over omega squared. Uh, and therefore, mm -hmm. And therefore, this is equal to this, which is equal to the product of the two exponentials. And 1 is 1. Huh? So it is just e to the minus real part of 1 omega squared. Is it okay for the moment? Okay. Now, remark. So if 
z. So this is t. Then I have the circle of radius t over 2. Hmm? Well, let me, let me be, make a big, larger picture. So, so. so this is t. This is t over 2. And I have, and this is uh, 3 half t. And then I have this circle here, which is the image of gamma. Hmm? And I am integrating on this, on this set. But I am integrating something which depends on 1 over z. So this is, say, this is z. And then I have to see where, where is 1 over z. Because I am, now I am integrating, you see, 1 over omega, z or omega, whatever you want. OK, the claim is now that if z belongs to the circle, the circle centered at t of radius t over 2, then 1 over z uh, so 1 over so this, this say assume that t is very small just so 2 over t is very large so I have this 2 over t here which is the 1 over 1 over this then I have this is 3 half t so this point through the map 1 over z goes to in 2, uh, 3 over t. Hmm? So the claim is that all points then lie on a circle, lie, belongs to the circle. Centered at centered at one over t, not sorry, not one over t. Centered at the at two over t minus uh, this divided by two. Uh, so centered at uh, two. Huh? Yes, uh, so w what is this difference? So this difference is uh, 2 over t minus, so it is 4. This difference is this. Uh, and therefore, I think uh, this difference is this. So 1 half of this plus 2. So center that 4. For the centered at uh, 4 over 3t and radius radius 2 over 3t. Radius, sorry. Radius, yes, 2 over 3t. OK, this is the remark. Well, the remark should be proven. Um, so one has to prove that if, so one has to prove that if z belongs to this, then 1 over z belongs to the W complex that such that W is equal to the center for 3 T plus the radius hmm? 
So assume for the moment that we have proven this remark. Huh? Maybe we can leave this, this remark as an exercise. So for the moment, assume this remark. Assume the remark. Hmm? <clears throat> OK, so now. 1 over omega here. Now, omega travels along this circle. So 1 over omega travels, by the remark, along this new circle. Uh, and therefore, uh, one over omega, so is of this form. Huh? So it is of this form, and therefore, it is of the form 4 over 3t multiplied by 1 plus 2 into the phi. Hmm? If omega belongs to gamma, then 1 over omega by, sorry for the notation. Uh, let me call this z again. No, z, maybe. Uh, then if omega travels on this circle, then by this remark that we, we leave as an exercise, uh, uh, 1 over omega lives on this circle. So now I, I put this in front of the parenthesis, so this is twice. So now 1 over omega squared is equal to 16 over 90 squared. <coughs> 1 plus 4e to the 2 phi plus 4e to the phi plus 4 to the e to the phi. Huh? 1 over omega, omega squared. 16 over 90 squared. OK, there is some, some number that now I don't find, unfortunately. Is it OK? Huh? This? Z squared plus. There is a one half where? Yes. Huh? Three times one half. Three times one half. Three times one half. One over omega is four over three t plus this. OK. Ah, sorry, I have made a mistake here. Thank you. Thank you. I, I have 1 over 2. This is the claim. Sorry. And therefore, <coughs> now we have uh, this is, thank you, is 1 over 4, and this is 1, maybe. Hopefully that now the constants are correct. Okay, so now the real part. <coughs> this is the problem of complex integrals, eh, by the way. <laughs> so the real part of uh, no, sorry, the real part of uh, this uh, is equal on this circle. The real part of this uh, is. Uh, Therefore, t is real, so 
90 squared times, now we have 1, 1, 4 cosine of 2, 5 plus cosine of 5. Okay. <clears throat> for any phi, for any phi in zero to pi. So now I want something like this, right? Therefore, I need that this bigger or equal than something. Okay? So let me find, try to find the minimum of this function. Hmm? So we minimize now the round parenthesis. <clears throat> so we minimize now min. So this is so let me let me consider now the function say f of um, f of phi equal one plus one four cos two phi plus cos phi on its domain. So let me let me minimize it. So f prime of phi is equal to minus one half sinus of 2 phi minus sinus of phi, which is equal to minus sinus of phi cos phi minus sinus of phi. OK? So huh? So phi, f of 0 is equal to 1 plus uh, 1, 4 plus 1, uh, which is equal to f of 2 pi. Um, now let me see what happens at the interior, uh, at the interior uh, critical points. So we have sinus of phi must be equal to minus sinus of phi sinus of phi. So solutions to so f prime equal to zero in the interior. Hmm? <coughs> then sinus solutions are sinus of phi equal to 0, which means phi equal to pi. Huh? So we have already checked what happens at the boundary. Huh? Now, uh, phi equal to pi is a solution, pi. And on this, uh, f of phi, f of pi, is equal to 1, then the cosinus is equal to minus 1, I think. It's 1, 4. Huh? It's 1, 4? F of 5 is equal to 1 over 4. F of 5 is 1 over 4. Like this? OK. So if sinus of phi is equal to 0, and then we, otherwise we have cosinus of phi so sinus of phi difference from 0, the other solution is cosinus of phi equal to minus 1. Cosinus of phi equal to minus 1. And so we are, um, again, phi equal pi. So the minimum point is phi equal pi, where the value is 1 over 4. OK, so what I'm saying is simply that phi, f of phi is always 
larger or equal than 1 over 4 for any phi into 0 to pi. Then it is also probably less than or equal than 9 uh, over 4. But this is, for the moment, I mean, we also have, doesn't matter. So this is larger. Uh, so hence, uh, this object here, so now, if, if I, now can, can I erase this, this part? Or OK. Uh, so this is larger than or equal to this I keep. It is positive. And then one, 1 over 4. 4 over 90 squared. Now, we can continue this inequality. Huh? Getting that gk of t is less than or equal to what? Uh, k factorial divided by 2 pi. Then I have. 2 over t to the k e to the minus 4 t square times 2 pi. Okay, for the moment. Okay, this is. I mean, this is. In, uh, there is an, an exponential which does not depend on theta, so it comes out from the integral. Then I get the length of uh, this, uh, which is two pi. Hmm. Factorial two pi two pi and I have this. Okay, let me check if I'm correct or not. I don't know. Apparently it seems to be correct. Okay. Therefore, this is the estimate that we were looking for on the coefficient. So now u of tx, therefore, is less than or equal to what? k from 0 to plus infinity. Now we, have the, we had this 2k factorial x to the 2k. Huh? And then I, I, I have this uh, then what do I have? I have this e to the minus 4 over 90 square outside. Then I have 2 to the k. k factorial here, and then I have t to the k. Hmm? OK. Do you agree? Is it OK? <clears throat> of course, if I made some mistake, please let me know. Otherwise, we do, we do not converge <laughs> to the solution of the problem. 
<coughs> now claim for any k 2k k factorial over 2k factorial is small actually smaller is small by the way you see 2k factorial is very large in front of in comparison to this and this but let, let us try to see whether this is true for any k hmm? Hmm? Do you immediately see that this is true? Yes. How can you see it? So you I mean, you, you have to show that this is this 2k k factorial k factorial is less than 2k factorial. Is it so immediate? Huh? Yes. Why? Because we open this 2k factorial. Yes. And two, four, until to two k, it goes with two. So you open this, and so you cancel this k, the last k factorial with this. No. Actually, we cancel uh, even numbers with two degree k multiplied by k factorial. Uh, yeah. Yes. But if you, if you don't see it, maybe we can prove it uh, uh, by induction. OK? Just check it by induction. k equal to 1, k equal to 0 is OK. k equal to 1 is OK. So assume this, then you want to show k plus 1 factorial, k plus 1 factorial. You want to show this. 2k plus 2 factorial. And uh, maybe you can use induction so that uh, this is equal, less than or equal to what do you have? You have a 2 here. Then you have a 2k factorial. Because 2k, 2 to the k, k factorial, k factorial is less than this 2k factorial. What remains is this 2 and k plus 1 squared. And so you have to show that this is less than this. So you have to show that this is less than this. And uh, to show this, uh, OK, to show this, uh, <coughs> you simply divide it by 2k factorial. So it is enough to show that 2k plus 1 square is less than or equal than 2k <coughs> plus 2 times 2k plus 1 which is obviously true, because this is equivalent to say that k plus 1 is less than or equal than 2k plus 1. OK? So it's true. I mean, maybe there is a quicker way. Just induction works very well. OK, so this is true. <coughs> so we can continue our inequality by putting here e to the, so I now I, I rewrite this. And then I have here k from 0 to plus infinity, 1 over k factorial, x squared over 2 to the k. Now you see why. We like 1 over k factorial because you can recognize that this is what is the exponential. So this is equal to the e x squared over t minus 4 over 90 squared. That is, if you want, 
e to the <coughs> 1 over t x squared minus 4 over 90. Hmm? So actually, our series is converging even uniformly. We have a bound e 1 over t x squared minus 4 we have this bound, if, if I'm not uh, wrong. So you see, <coughs> so the series, the sum, the infinite sum, is converging uniformly for bounded x for any positive t. Hence, u is continuous. For any non-negative t, u is continuous. And u, therefore, u of 0 is equal to 0. Fine. So what we have proven up to now is that u defines a continuous function, hmm, which is 0 in 0. Next, uh, what remains is to show that similar properties are true for the ut, ux, and uxx. So there are similar kind of computations for the series for the infinite sums given by g prime of t and uh, uxx. So at the end, and now I don't repeat the computations, maybe. So at the end, u turns out to be even more c infinity times r. Mm -hmm. By construction, once you have this regularity, you can differentiate under the infinite sum. And by construction, u satisfies the PD a posteriori, by construction. Because your coefficients have been constructed like this. And so u, u solves PD. Okay. So this is way Tikhonov found another solution in an infinite uh, in the half space, non-zero solution of the heat equation. So this is an example that shows that uniqueness can be very tricky. Hmm? So what we have not proven, but maybe I can leave it uh, as a homework, uh, we, had, we have not proven the claim that uh, if z is in that circle, then 1 over z is in the other circle. I leave it, uh, OK? OK, so uh, now I would like to, to start a discussion I don't know if I'm able to conclude today. Last discussion on parabolic equations. So, so on why the uh, so the denotation for the heat kernel was phi, the this, uh, fundamental solution of the heat equation. It was phi. Why phi of t x is so useful? So remember that we have some constant here, what is important, n over 2, and then 
minus x squared over 4t. And this is defined, uh, say, for any tx uh, in 0 plus infinity times rn. And if you want, we can extend it at time 0 with the value 0, but not at the origin. So remember that the origin in time space, 0, 0 is a singularity. OK? So why this is so important? So this, is, this will conclude our, our discussion on parabolic equations. Then we will say something on uh, elliptic equations, the next lectures. And then we will start functional analysis. So there will be a big parenthesis on functional analysis. And uh, maybe at the end of the course, we will be able to come back to PDs as an application of functional analysis. This is the scheme of the, of the course. Okay? For the moment, we have not used any functional analysis. Uh, we have uh, worked in uh, smooth space, continuous, C1, C2, whatever. Okay? No theorems in abstract linear function analysis. OK, so now, um, oh, yes, we have the following theorem. So let u0 bar be a function in this class, a bounded function and uh, continuous. Then the function u of tx defined as follows u of tx equal to the integral t y minus x u 0 bar of y dy for any tx in 0 plus infinity times rn satisfies the following properties. One, u is infinity times rn. Two, ut minus Laplace of u is equal to zero in. Rn and three limit as tx goes to uh, zero x of u of tx is equal to u zero x for any x in R. You see. This is very interesting result, which says that if you want to solve for an initial condition, proper initial condition, uh, u of 0, u 0 bar, you want to solve the heat equation 
with this initial condition, one solution is given by, the by this, uh, this expression here. This is called, uh, com do you know what is the convolution? Yes. OK, so this is the convolution in, in space of the heat kernel at time t together with the, um, with the initial condition. So we can produce a smooth solution taking the convolution. OK? Remark. And so, so I mean, this is quite, uh, quite important. It, maybe it is also the reason why phi is called fundamental solution. You can construct using phi, uh, you can construct solutions to this kind of problem by convolution. Um, remark, before proving this, assume, in addition, that uh, u0 bar is not identically 0, but is, say, weaker or equal than 0. Hmm? Then u of tx is bigger than 0. What does it mean? So assume that your initial condition So assume zero that u zero bar is this. Say. Yes. Huh? The, so the striking fact <laughs> so so this is uh, okay, this is uh, x, and this is time, and this is u zero. So u0 is identically 0 up to a small bump, very small, somewhere. Of course, u0 is, uh, the, the bump is such that u0 is non-negative. Then the striking fact of this solution, which makes me make it, well, uh, the striking fact is that now take, take any positive time, any positive time. Huh? Then you look to this object here. And it happens that the solution, so let, let, me, let me do it a little bit larger. <laughs> it's impossible to, OK, this is a small, a small bump, maybe very far. OK, maybe very, 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 very far. And then you take any positive time. Well, at any positive time, your solution will be something like but positive here, positive. Positive, not zero, positive, strictly positive. Huh? So this means that if somewhere very far the solution is positive, then instantly and the initial condition, sorry, is positive, then instantly your solution will be positive here, almost at minus infinity. So this says that uh, this, is, this comes from this expression. This says that uh, the, there is this fact that the, the so-called infinite speed of propagation of the signal. 
something that happens very far initially at time zero then produces a disturbance here very far for any time, even for t equal 10 to the minus 1 million. Huh? So this is a property uh, of the par of parabolic equations, like the heat equation. And of course, it's not anymore true for the wave equation. We have seen with example, remember, we have studied this initial condition. For the, and we have seen that uh, there were large regions where the solution remained zero. We have two waves uh, interacting, but at the end, the solution were zero in a large region. So the compactness of the support here was preserved. On the other hand here, the compactness of the support is not anymore preserved. So this is maybe one of the most uh, important differences between parabolic and hyperbolic second order equations. Uh, in some sense, uh, in some sense, but maybe this is questionable, say, parabolic equations are not so physical, maybe because it is difficult to imagine a disturbance that propagates with infinite speed instantly in, in real physics. But it's, this, is a, this is maybe questionable. Hmm? Of course, for the wave equation, we know that we have a finite speed of propagation. Hmm? This is not anymore true in the case of parabolic. So you have, you have this, this is really very, very um, uh, qualitative important fact concerning the difference between parabolic and hyperbolic. OK? And this is immediate from the fact that uh, this kernel here is strictly positive everywhere. Of course, it, it um, decays. I mean, it, it goes to 0 very quickly and exponentially. But it is always strictly positive. And this fact uh, uh, has this implication. OK? So uh, we have this remark. So we can now prove the, th the theorem. No, we cannot, because sorry, there is no time. <laughs> Uh, so maybe, maybe, so tomorrow, uh, so please for tomorrow try to do the, the, the part of the claim on the circles concerning the Tikhon of example. Uh, and then tomorrow we'll prove this, which will be the last theorem on parabolic equations.